So now we're going to start looking at using a force diagram to solve a problem. So we need to go back to the equation that we derived for force gravity versus mass. So remember, we got this equation that force gravity equals the weight of an object, which equals the mass times the gravity on that planet. In the planet we are mainly doing problems on our Earth. So G on Earth equals that negative 9.81 newtons for every kilogram. So in other words, an object is pulled with that force, 9.81 newtons, for every kilogram that's present in the object. So that is going to be an equation that we are going to use to help us solve these problems. So I want to look at problem number two here. It's a little more complex, and we're going to use this one to kind of start our problems. So they want you to figure out the tension in each cable. So we have this cable right here, and then we have this one. So let's start with, we have two objects here too. Let's start by looking at this one. So if I do my dashed line around it, I'm going to look at the four kilogram mass. If I did a force diagram for this, when this string is touching it, that's my force tension. And then, isn't the weight force gravity pulling down on that? Okay. And I know this is at rest. So if it is at rest, that means my forces are balanced. And it also means that if I add up the forces, so if I sum up the forces in the different planes, they will equal zero. The sum of the forces equals zero. Now, here's the symbol we use for that. It's called sigma. It looks like this. It's a Greek letter in the alphabet. I can say the sum of the forces equals zero. So if I add up all the forces, and we usually do the forces in two planes. So we do the horizontal plane, and then the other plane that we do is the vertical plane. Now, in this case, the forces are only in the vertical plane. So I could say the force tension plus the force gravity equals zero for that four kilogram mass. Now, I don't know what the force tension is. Force tension, I don't know what that is right here. That's what they want me to solve for. Plus, the force gravity, isn't gravity equal to that equation that we had above here? Didn't we say force gravity equals weight, which equals mass times gravity? So I can use this to solve for that. So I know this is four kilograms times a negative 9.81 newtons per kilogram equals zero. So when I do my math here, I believe I get that this force gravity is a negative 39.2 newtons plus force tension equals zero. Well, that means force tension then must equal 39.2 newtons. It's got to be positive. So just figured out this force tension. This force tension equals 30. 9.2 newtons. So we're saying this is congruent to this because this was a negative 39.2 newtons. Okay, and we figured that out from the weight. Weight equals mass times gravity. Now I want to look at this object. It's still at rest, so the forces are balanced on it. So that means when I add up the forces on this, they should also equal to zero. So, I'm going to start with the force diagram. So here's my 5 kilogram mass. It looks like this. It looks like I have a force tension. I'm going to call it force tension 1. I have a force 
gravity. And then I also have this string is touching that. That would be another force tension. Let me just draw it there, and I'm going to call that force tension 2. So if I have two forces on an object and they're both a tension or an applied, I'm going to label one as 1 and 1 as 2, or you could do A and B, whatever you like. Now, in this one, it's also, I know if I sum up the forces on this, they should equal 0 because it's balanced. So if I would write my equation, I could say force tension 1 plus force tension 2 plus force gravity equals 0. So I know force gravity, this is equal to m times g, so I can fill these in. I also know this force tension right here, I solved it right here, because that was the tension that is acting right here. Now, the only difference is on the 5 kilogram ball, that is pulling down, so that means I'm going to change the sign. So it would be plus negative 39.2 plus the force gravity of the 5 kilogram ball times a negative 9.81 moves per kilogram equals 0, and that should let me solve the force tension 1. So when I do my math on this, I really get force tension 1 minus 39.2 minus, when I multiply those, I have a 49.02. This is Newton's, and this is Newton's, equals 0. Do my math on here. My force tension 1 equals 88. 0.25 newtons when I solve those. So now I have my tension in this part was 88.25 newtons and this tension was that 39.2 newtons. And that makes sense. The tension should be greater in the upper string because it is supporting both masses. The tension in the bottom string is only supporting pulling up on the one mass. Okay, so now we want to do a force problem that is at an angle. Our other ones were not at angles, what this one is. So we want to look at Tarzan who is hanging at the tree here and He's at rest, they say he's stuck. So that means we have balanced forces, which means when we sum up the forces on him in either direction, horizontal or vertical, they equal zero. So if we do the horizontal forces or if we do the vertical forces, they should sum up to equal zero. So we want to look at Tarzan. That's our object of interest. When we look at this, we notice we have some contact there and we have some contact here. So determining our forces, that bind is like a rope. We're going to call that force tension. Now, this force right here, since his loincloth is made out of fabric, which is like threads, I'm going to call that another tension. If someone called it a force normal, that would be acceptable too, because you could say that that loincloth is a surface in contact with him, pressing on him, so that would be a form of force. And I want to distinguish these two forces, so I'm going to call this force tension 1 and this force tension 2. And then my third force is the force gravity that is pulling him straight down. Now, since this is at an angle, I'm going to need to resolve one of my forces into components. Since these are already at 90 degrees, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to resolve this one. So this force tension vine, so I'm going to call it force tension 1 in the x direction, is pulling to the left. And then this force tension 1 in the y direction is pulling him up. So that vine is pulling to the left, and it's pulling right. 
So we know this angle, we know this is a 40, and then we know this is a 50, because this is a right angle right here. Okay. Now, we need to decide, since we know that the sum of the forces here are zero, we've got to figure out what's congruent. So what is congruent here? So we have to look at the horizontal forces. So that means this must be congruent to this. These are my congruency marks. And this pulling up must be to what's pulling down. Okay. So with our questions here, they ask you, write an equation for the vertical forces on Tarzan. So if we're looking at vertical, that's going to be this one and this one. So couldn't I say force, tension, one in the y direction plus, because we're summing the forces, force, gravity, since these are balanced, equals zero. That's all they're asking you to write, is just write what the equation is. The next one says write that for the horizontal forces on Tarzan. Well the horizontal forces are this one and this one. So I could say force, tension, one in the x direction plus force, tension, two equals zero. They're all balanced. The next question says Tarzan's mass is 75 kilograms. Calculate his weight. Well, don't we know this is equal to the weight, which is equal to m times g? So we can say force gravity equals the weight, which is equal to the mass times the gravity. So the mass of Tarzan is 75 kilograms times, since we're on Earth here, it's a negative 9.81 newtons per kilogram. Kilograms cancels out. There's my answer. It looks like that is about a negative 735.75. I'm going to write it over here. and it's newtons. All forces are measured in newtons, and it's negative because it is down. So we're going to keep the same signage that we had before for velocities to the right and up were positive, to the left and down were negative. So we'll keep our forces with that same signage system. The next one that they're asking us to solve for is they want to know, use the appropriate equations for the forces on Tarzan to determine the tension in the vine. So if I want to figure out the tension here in the vine, right there, that's what I want to figure out. What is that tension? Oh, guess what? If I just figured this out, that this was a negative 735.75 newtons, don't I know that that force gravity was equal to this force? So that means this force right here is a positive 735.75, right? So I'm going to go down here and do this down below. So I know that this force right here, force, tension, one in the y direction equals 735.75. That's what was pulling up. Here is the vine, just rewriting this, and then this was the force tension one in the x direction. So I know this side is this, I know this angle is 40, this angle is 50. So using a little trig, I should be able to solve that, so I know this angle and this is opposite. Um, can't I set that up and say, so, and I want to figure out the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. So if I want to figure this out, can't I say that I know the, the side over here and that is opposite. So isn't that opposite over the hypotenuse? opposite, so I'm using this 50 here, the opposite, isn't that the sine, which is equal to sine, and I'm going to use the 50 
of 50 degrees equals the opposite side, which we know is 735.75 newtons. So right here's my angle I'm using, so it's the opposite side over a hypotenuse. So if I want to solve this, I can put this over 1. I can cross multiply. I get that the hypotenuse equals 960 newtons. That makes sense because the hypotenuse should be greater than either side. So right here, this force tension is 960 newtons. That's what I got. Now, on the next problem, they want you to determine the tension in the loincloth. Well, guess what? If you know this side and you know this side, you can solve for the force tension, 1 and the x, and then you know this is congruent to this. So if I go down here, so I know force tension, 1 in the x direction plus force tension 2 equals 0. So I can solve for that other side of the triangle. So I know, and it's up to you what you want to use to solve. So you know this was 735.75 newtons. You know this side, the hypotenuse was 960 newtons. You know this angle is 50. You can solve for this side right here, okay? And you can solve for that in multiple ways. So you can choose to solve for that in any way that you want to. So I got an answer that said the force tension to was about 630 newtons. Okay, so you could also use the Pythagorean theorem. You could take 960 squared minus 735 squared and then take the square root of that and then you should get about 630, somewhere right around that. Or you can use a trig function because you could use adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So you could take the adjacent, because that's the side you're trying to figure out is here, over hypotenuse, which adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine of 50 equals the adjacent side you don't know, and that adjacent side is really your force Right up here. It's your force tension one in the x direction over the hypotenuse you know is 960 newtons. So if you did that, uh, the other thing you need to be careful is make sure that your calculator calculator is in degree mode. Oh, I guess I got 617 on this one. So I got 617 newtons when I did it this way. So that would probably be... This, I think, was rounded where they used um, 10 for... 10 um, newtons per kilogram. They rounded that. So I think that's why that's a little high. So I would say about 617 would be the answer. Newtons. And it was to the right, so I would leave it as being positive.